All right, welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily, where you subscribe for our daily videos, keeping you informed on everything that goes on with Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, the whole market. Got a great video prepared for you. I hope you learn a lot. And just like always, I want to continue our journey to try and become smarter, more disciplined cryptocurrency investors. Question of the day, the question for you is, which cryptocurrency do you think is the most undervalued at this moment? Which cryptocurrency is the most undervalued? I want to dive into this treasure chest that we call coin market cap and try and figure out which few coins, and I do want to put an emphasis on the word few, which few coins will be the winners. You know, what should I put my money in today to get these massive gains that we've seen time and time again tomorrow? Which coins are going to lead to life-changing wealth, which is very much possible? And on the other hand, which coins will just turn into glass beads? You know the story, right? Glass beads, they used to be used as money in some parts of Africa. I mean, for years, they were used as money in Africa a long time ago. That is until Africa started getting visited by Europe. And when Europeans saw this glass bead-based economy, they saw people storing their wealth in glass beads, they saw people using glass beads as payment. What they do? Well, they started producing their own glass beads back home and bringing them to Africa. Pretty soon the whole system was worthless. So let's not have this happen to whatever we put our money in. And just for a recap, so this is how money starts. In Africa, the beads started off as collectibles. Eventually it turned into a reliable store of value, then a, a widespread medium of exchange. Then eventually in Africa, it was a full African money. The only problem with these beads is that it wasn't a hard money. Anyways, Getting back to the main topic at hand, you need to realize that most of these coins on this treasure chest before us, I mean, there are, there's some gold, there are a few gems, but most of these are just glass beads. So let's go through a couple of these. What are the most undervalued coins right now? Let us know in the comments. We'll critique together. Just going through Ethereum right now at 176. Is this an undervalued coin? Ethereum, it's, a pro, it's for programmable smart contracts. It's really an ICO factory. They were the first to market as far as platform cryptocurrencies go. And it just seems like they're always a year or two away from reaching their full potential as far as scaling. We have XRP, XRP at 35 cents. Hey, let's not challenge the banks. Let's work with them for cross-border payments. Is XRP undervalued? I have a question about XRP for the XRP army that's in our in our audience. Why would banks use XRP? Why would banks use XRP, which is possibly an unregistered security, over a stable coin? Love to hear an answer to that. Or what about EOS? 543. EOS is supposed to be the Ethereum killer. Are there any good dApps on EOS? Any good decentralized applications? I haven't heard of any. Uh, we have Tron. Do you guys want a long Tron or you want a long Tron's marketing team? Or how about VeChain? VeChain, supply chain management cryptocurrency. Sounds pretty good, right? Of course, you're still going to need a human to input the data at certain points, so it can never be truly decentralized, right? Or of course, there's Dogecoin, the ultimate meme coin. I mean, there are, there are over 200 of these puppies, right? Seriously, the bull run is coming. Which coin is the most undervalued? Make your case in the comments below. Democracy rules, the most deserving will get upvoted. Personally, and this may surprise some of you, personally, I think Bitcoin is by far the most undervalued cryptocurrency at this point in time. And I'm gonna tell you why. So let me explain Bitcoin and then I wanna compare it to all these other altcoins. So consider this, whoops, consider this. Bitcoin is the hardest money that the world has ever seen. It is in it takes the power of money out of the hands of the elite, out of the hands of third parties, and puts it back into the hands of the individual, i.e. you. It's uncensorable, it's unconfiscatable, it's unprintable. Bitcoin, right now, it's 10 years old, and if Bitcoin survives another 10 years, I think people will realize it's here to stay and it's gonna solidify itself as a legitimate store of value. And since Bitcoin doesn't have a single point of failure, and for many other reasons besides that, I think Bitcoin is gonna be around 10 years from now. So that being said, I want you to consider this. Maybe blockchain isn't that good for that many things. Maybe blockchain isn't that good for that many things. Now, I'm not saying it's not gonna revolutionize some things. What I'm asking you to consider is that maybe blockchain isn't really gonna change everything. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's just gonna change two, three, four things. 
I actually think there's a case to be made right now that the greatest use case for blockchain, at least within the past 10 years and definitely for the next few years, the greatest use case for blockchain is being a store of value. And as far as store of value candidates go, because there are plenty of coins trying to be money, right now Bitcoin is the winner by far. Bitcoin is the most secure cryptocurrency there is. That's a fact. And essentially, think about this, essentially, the coin that's going to win in the end, as far as being money is concerned, it's the, it's the coin that's going to give you the least anxiety. It's going to, you want to put your money in something that you don't worry about, put your money into something that lets you sleep at night, and that's Bitcoin. Think about it like this. You've heard this before. If I gave you $10,000 today, but you couldn't touch it for 10 years, and you had to put it in either Bitcoin, an altcoin, or fiat currency, what would you choose? You can't touch it for 10 years, $10,000. I'd choose Bitcoin, personally. I wouldn't trust it in any of these altcoins, and I can see how maybe if you're playing it super safe, you'd go, I wanna put it in fiat currency, and uh, you know it's gonna lose a little bit of value, but you know the US dollar is gonna be here in 10 years. But personally, I'd put it in Bitcoin because I, I'm taking the risk that it's gonna turn into a legitimate store of value, the best store of value. So you might be saying to yourself at this moment, hey, Aaron, Bitcoin has so many limitations. What about all these other coins? What about... Ethereum, right? You can do so much more on Ethereum than you can do with Bitcoin. Okay. Like I said, you want your money to be secure. Yes, you have the potential to do way more on Ethereum, but Bitcoin really only needs to do one thing well, and that's be a legitimate store of value, and eventually a means of exchange. Now, besides that, money is a much, much bigger market. Money is a $100 trillion market, and... These decentralized applications, even if you put all the decentralized applications that will eventually be successful in the future, the market cap is still going to be less than money. It's going to be less than $100 trillion or $86 trillion or whatever it is. Because here's the thing, guys. Are you ready for me to blow your mind? Are you ready for me to rock your world? I'm still not sold on decentralized applications at all. For a company who wants to develop a database on a blockchain, it's more expensive. It's slower. That's just a fact. I mean, decentralized applications would be slower and more expensive for a company to manage and maintain, especially for its users as well, being slower. That being said, you tell me, tell you what, you tell me what's the killer dApp. You tell me the best decentralized dApp that you can think of. Decentralized app. Because the fact is, guys, here we are years later and we still have yet to see something like email. You know, we still have yet to see something like PowerPoint or some awesome game or something. And the reality is, guys, it's early. We are in the early years, and it might take another five, six, seven years before this killer dap is created. It might not be any of these. And even when it is created, which I'm sure it will be in the future, I'm sure blockchain is good for other things, but even when the killer dap is created, market cap is still not as big as money. Money is a much bigger market in the long run, and that's why. I think in the long term, Bitcoin is the most undervalued coin at this time. Okay, now you're welcome to debate me. I'm going to see you guys in the comments. You tell me if you think there's something better than Bitcoin or, or what you're hedging on. Now, let me be clear on something right now. What I'm not saying is, I'm just talking about long term. I'm just talking about my opinion for the most undervalued coin. I'm not saying don't take out a position in altcoins. I'm not saying that you, you could make a lot of money trading altcoins um, in the short term, in the medium term, possibly if you play your cards right for the long term as well. I mean, just trading the market cycles. I actually think the next, at least the next one, if not the next couple uh, market cycles, big uptrends followed by downtrends and uptrends will be still driven by retail investors. But thinking long term, because you got to realize the cryptocurrency market in the long term, it's going to be a lot different than what we're seeing today. As the years go by, the market is going to mature. And as these cycles, you know, rally up and come back down, as the market matures, you're going to see the investors mature. So for the next couple of cycles, you could still, you know, greed is strong and retail investors will still try and find, you know, these low caps and try and make a bunch of money. But eventually, as we mature and institutional investors come in, it's really, people are going to be really more smart with their investments. I mean, as you know, I, I have positions in altcoins, but the majority of my portfolio is Bitcoin. 
because I believe that it cannot be stopped um, and it's going to compete with the money. And it's not going to happen this year and next year. There's going to be boom and bust cycles as we get into this. And like I said, if Bitcoin can survive another 10 years, I think it will have solidified itself as a legitimate or reliable store value and will be even further along as the market matures. All right, guys, great video. I'll see you tomorrow.